So uh, this is the learning management system. This is the main login page. And uh, if you had a demo account, you probably recognize this page. It's the, the same login page. Um, we also have a login page for admin for administrators. Um, I want to make sure you can see my screen. Can you see yes. my screen okay? Uh -huh. Okay. So if you have any questions about anything, please uh, feel free to interrupt and ask your question. And this meeting's for you. Okay. So, um, yeah, this is the login screen. Uh, you'll use your login or your email address to log in along with your password. If, um, if you're a new user in the system, we have the ability to send a new user email. And I'll show you how to do that in the admin area. And uh, we also have the ability to set uh, default passwords for new users. And so when first logging in, you would use that login information and the first time you log in, you'll be required to enter a permanent uh, password and replace the temporary. Okay. If, however, you forget your password, all you have to do is click the forgot password link and then enter your username or email address. And that will be the same piece of information. So I have an account that I'm using for this demo. So you'll see that I have um, your logo in the top. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's also this main image. If you wanted to update this image, we can update this with a different image. Um, right now, this is um, our standard image. And but like I said, if you want to replace it, I'd be more than happy to replace it. Um, it just needs to be an image that is um, a high resolution and something that's at least 2,000 pixels wide. Did your screen change? Okay. There we go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah I noticed that it said pa the sharing was paused. So um, I don't know what did that. Okay. So um, I'll go back to the login page just to recover that. So yeah, this is the login. A user clicks this to uh, retrieve their password. They enter their username or email address, which is the same information. Okay. I'll log in. And so this is the main page that users will see. They will not see this curriculum. Um, I was doing a demo earlier and that curriculum got added and I forgot to um, remove it before this training. Okay. But whenever your users first log in, if they logged in right now, they would not see any training in the system whatsoever. Um, the reason being is because all the training that's in the system right now is not set up for self-enrollment. But if you want, I can set that training up for self-enrollment, um, which would not be an issue. So. Whenever your users log into the system, do you want them to be able to self-enroll in training? So I know that there's, um, you might be able to help me answer that because um, I know that there's going to be those first basic courses that the plant uh, manager wants them to take. And then I think there's like five courses in that series that I sent. And then, um, the, and then beyond that, um, it probably would be advantageous to allow them to take courses to self-enroll. Um, okay. So maybe it's something that we just let them get through the that first section, and then I'll just let you know, and then we change it to self-enroll when they're pretty much done with that. Okay. So the first five courses that are in there now will set for self-enrollment, and we don't really have any other courses in there, but going forward, we'll. Um, we will not set self-enrollment whenever we add the new courses until you say um, add these for self-enrollment. Sure. That doesn't mean they cannot be assigned, and okay. I'll get that into that into when we're, whenever we cover the admin area. Okay. So whenever a user first logs in, they're not going to see any courses here unless um, whenever I set 
the self-enrollment features for uh, the five courses, they will see five courses under catalog. Okay. And then they'll be able to self-enroll into those courses. And once they self-enroll, then any courses that the user is enrolled into will appear under My Courses. All right. And courses that they have started but have not finished will appear under Resume Courses. Okay. So a user can click on any of these titles and it will take them to that page um, for the training. So this is going to show all the My Courses and this is going to show all the catalog courses. And <clears throat> we do have a search feature. So if a user is searching for a course and they know the title of the course or the course number, then they can enter, enter it here. Um, so these courses have come up because these are um, available for self-enrollment because the user has been assigned this curriculum, go back, okay. this curriculum and those courses happen to be within this curriculum. So a couple of other features, uh, there's a mailbox at the top. Any users that are sent to the system or sent to the user, any emails that are sent to the user in the learning management system will show up here. This uh, profile icon will allow the user to edit their information. And so they can, um, they click edit profile, they can um, enter information that's not grayed out. So their first name and last name, username and email address are grayed out. So they cannot edit that, but any of this other information they can edit. Okay. If they wanna change their password, and they can change their password by clicking the change password link. They just have to enter their current password and then their new password. And then um, the menu on the right, we have pretty much the same options. We have messages, dashboard. Dashboard is the main page, my courses, catalog. Um, like I said, those are gonna be courses that the user is enrolled into. The catalog is courses that the user um, can self-enroll. Calendar, if there's any due dates for courses, those will appear on the calendar. Transcript will have any training that the user has started or um, you'll see that I have this training on my transcript. I can print my transcript. And again, profile. Are you familiar with how our courses work? I demoed them um, a while back, so it's been a okay. while, but I think I remember. Well, I'll run through that again, or run through it once. Um, so this is a curriculum. So if you assign a user to a curriculum, um, it will have training that is listed. And, um, We'll have training that's listed and the user will have an option to enroll. Um, you'll see that I've already started this course and I have not finished it, so it says resume. Mm -hmm. And just click this link and I'll click the resume link here and it will open the course. If I click start lesson, it'll take me into the lesson there's audio for the lesson and we have uh, navigation on the left and we do have bookmarking so um, any user any pages the user has already viewed will be grayed out or blacked out and at the end of some sections there are confirm your knowledge questions And if a user gets a question wrong, or if they submit the answer twice, and they want an option to review, 
there's a review link. So it'll take them to the page where that information is located. So they can review that information. As a administrator, am I able to view their results of their tests? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. you are able to do that on the admin side. I'll show you how to do that. Sure. So um, final exam. So once a user enters a final exam, the navigation goes away. And um, the only way the user can get out is if they close the window. If they close the window, it will still keep them in progress. It will not track a store score for the course. So anytime a user submits an answer, there's an immediate response as to whether or not they got the question correct or incorrect. And I'll continue to submit this and show you the end screen. The last screen will show a score and it will let them know whether they passed or failed. So this is a 47, which um, is not a passing score. Let me close that. And my score updates to the course information. So if I want to take the course again, I just click resume and I can try to pass the course. So any questions about the user side? No, and you can, as far as the number of times you can take it, that's, that's, you can edit that, right? Yeah, so if you, um, let me go to the admin side and um, I'll answer that question there. Sure, no problem. So the admin side, you get to the admin by um, the admin link on the right, okay. or if you sign in through the admin page. If you sign in through the admin page, it'll take you directly to the admin area of the learning management system. If you do not have admin rights, then you will get an error on this page. Okay. So um, I'm going to click admin. And first thing we see is the admin dashboard. And if I want to get back to the learner side, there is a link here. And there's also a link on the right uh, that'll take oh, me back to the learner yeah. side of the LMS. And so I have a couple more options. I have um, an overview. I have learners. This will show me the learners that are in the system. Uh, courses. This will show course activity within the system. And right now you don't have any course activity. So courses, we come over to courses. This is going to list all the courses that are in the system. Right now there are five. And um, I apologize, can you, what was the question that you had? I already forgot it. Oh, it was no problem. It was just uh, the ability to sort of uh, limit the number of times you can fail a test. Yes, you can. Um, so we can go to edit. And these are all, this is all the information that you can edit for the course. The syllabus, um, you never want to edit any information in the syllabus. Sure. If you edit the information in the syllabus, it'll break the course. Don't want to do uh, that. Right. And availability is, so if we allow self-enrollment and I set this to um, your department, then all 24 used users will be able to self-enroll into this course. Now, automatic re-enrollment is going to define whether or not a user can retake a course. Okay. So, um, if we have automatic re-enrollment, then the user will be able to re-enroll in the course um, whenever they finish the course. Okay. So, um, that means you know, they can score anything and um, and be able to re-enroll into the course. Technically, you're only going to re-enroll once a course has been completed. So until a user achieves a passing score, which is 70%, they're not going to move into a completed status. So the okay. enable automatic re-enrollment is going to allow a user to um, 
going to re-enroll the user automatically so they can complete the course again. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want them to be able to do that, then you just turn this off. Yeah, the, so I guess it's really not necessary to do that if you basically can't leave the course until you pass. Right, yeah, you um, you can complete the course. Even, if, even after you pass the course, you can enter the course and complete it again. It's just not going to update your completion information. Okay. The user would have to be re-enrolled into the training to uh, receive a new enrollment. Okay, that works. So, um, other options, there's um, completion and and this allows re-enrollment after completion. So if we, we could also set this for, um, let's say we allow re-enrollment, but only a month after they complete the training the first time, then they would automatically get re-enrolled. Mm -hmm. So do you want users to be able to re-enroll after they move into a completed status? I don't think it's necessary. Because okay. if they have to, I mean, if they can go back and access whenever they want, and you know, they, they really can't, finish until you get a passing score that's that's good that's those are good uh, controls right there okay yeah, messages are turned off for individual courses um, we do that because if a user or if an admin builds uh, let's say a curriculum with 25 courses and the curriculum and all the emails are turned on for the individual courses then a user is going to receive 25 emails yeah so we keep the messages turned off for the individual courses. Um, so I'm going to save that. I'm also going to um, make the go ahead and make the changes to the other courses. So we only have four more courses to go. Okay. I'm going to click uh, the course and click edit. And the availability, we're going to allow self-enrollment to your department. And your department is the highest level of hierarchy within the learning management system. Okay. So if you want to assign something to all users, if you want something to affect all users, then you would um, apply that change at the department level. Okay. Got a couple more courses here. So each of the each of the pages, the um, the course pages and the user pages, they're all going to be laid out the same, and um, and also the reporting pages as well. And once I update this final course, I'll show you what I mean. So anytime you set a setting as well, it's going to show you how many users it's going to affect. Okay. So this shows that there are 24 users that are that it will be affected by this change. Save. So I want to show you the different page layouts. Uh, right now, let me get rid of this. So this is a basic course layout, um, and if I come over to the user page, uh, this is a basic course, um, sorry, user layout. I'm going to delete this layout. And these are all the different reports, and you'll notice that all of these have um, similar layouts. And the nice thing about this is you can adjust the layout by showing what um, courses or what information you want displayed. This is gonna populate the columns in this uh, report. So essentially, each of these pages are a report in themselves. Mm -hmm. So this would be um, the basic report, this would be a user report, and this would be a course report. Okay. And so you can set the um, information, so allow self-enrollment, we'll 
say we want that in our report and what information might we want. Automatic enrollment. So we'll say that we like this layout of the report. Uh, we can save any layouts of reports by clicking uh, this report icon and click create new report and then we'll name it and then click create new. And so this will be a saved report and if you want this report to display each time you come to this page all you have to do is click the star and now this report will be the default report. Okay. And also, if you come to the dashboard, this report is going to be under My Saved Report. So you just have to click on that report, and it takes you back to that report. And if we come to Users, this is where all your users are going to be listed. And right now it's displaying 20 out of 24. You can change the layout of a page by selecting uh, this below and I'm going to save this report and call it my user report I'm going to add some more columns to this as well so I want to see date added and when they first logged in also want to see the number of logins So if I come back up here, I can click the diskette and save that layout. So you'll see all your users in the system. Uh, nobody's logged in. I think you've logged in, but that's it. And so whenever you're ready to send information to your users on how to log in, all you have to do is select the users that you want to send this to. Yeah. If you want to select all the users, then you um, choose select this page and then there's an option that says reset password so this is going to open up a dialogue for a password reset message but there's also the option to send new user message so this is kind of the new user email that is sent out whenever a user is entered into the system and okay. you can edit this information before you send it out but these oh, tags um, that are, be, go ahead. This would be the, the first email I would send to them announcing that they're, they're enrolled and ready. Correct. Right. Okay. Right. Right. And there's certain tags that are down at the bottom that will help you um, complete information within um, this email. So this is a set password link and first name, last name. So if I um, if you want to make it more personal, then you can delete um, last name. But if you want to add last name back in, then you just come down here, click last name, and it adds the last name link back in. Okay. I'm going to click cancel because I don't really want to send this right now. Right. But if you have a user that has forgotten their password as well, um, you can reset their password for them. So um, you can click the reset password and it will send them the reset password email. And then they'll have a link that they can click on to reset their password. Um, another option would be you go to edit the user if you click edit user, you can reset their password here. Okay. So set new temporary password, new temporary password. The only thing is you will have to tell them what that new temporary password is. Yeah. So um, some other options that we have for editing users. Um, individual, uh, we can look at their transcript. 
So if I click user transcript, it'll take me to their transcript. Um, we can send a message to the user from the learning management system. Uh, reset password, merge user if you have more a user that's been entered into the system twice. Uh, duplicate user, you probably won't need to do that. View enrollments will allow you to view the courses the user is enrolled into. So I'm going to look for my account. And view enrollments, and it's going to show the courses that I've enrolled in. Okay. And this is going to show the score um, that I had for that course. Mm -hmm. And if I want to edit the enrollment, all I have to do is click on that enrollment and click edit enrollment, and it will take me to the information for this. Um, so if I want, I can mark this complete and I can change the score. I can also see the past uh, times that a user has tried to complete this course. So um, I've taken it already once today and scored a 24 and then I scored a 27. So if I save this, I'm gonna move it into a past status or a completed status. Going back to the user page, there's a couple of ways that we can enroll users into training. Uh, we can enroll them individually. So if I select a user, I can click Enroll User. Okay. And then I select the courses that I want to enroll them into. Um, so if I come down to SIPCO, my courses are going to be listed and I can select those courses and then enroll. Gotcha. Another option you have is selecting multiple users and clicking enroll users, and then you can enroll all of these users into whatever training you want. Okay. You can always add more courses and you can always add more users by um, either typing the name or clicking in here and then scrolling down and selecting the user. Okay, that seems pretty simple. And you can also do this from the course page. So if we go to the course page and click on courses, then I can click on all of these courses, click enroll users, and then um, like the users, it's a little bit more bulky uh, just because you have to select each user individually. Yeah. Yep. But <clears throat> one thing I want to point out is that these courses are all set for self-enrollment. So that means that if I come back to the learner side, these courses are available in the catalog now. Okay. So that means I can enroll myself into this course and then start it. So as it stands now, after I've notified uh, my folks, those are already on their dashboard when they sign in? Yes, they'll be on their dashboard. You won't, they will not see. Um, yeah, that courses icon right they will not see courses or resume courses but yep. um you'll see that i enrolled myself into this course so it moved it to my courses and this was already in my courses okay so um coming back to users not much more that I want to show you there. Um, along with your options that you see on the right, you're going to see the same options appear on the top. So um, if you select multiple users, these are going to be your bulk actions. And 
or your mass actions, they're going to be pretty much the same. So with catalog, I'm sorry, not with catalog, with courses, I want to show you how to build a curriculum. Um, so if you have a group of training that you want to sign or create for your users, let's say you wanted to have a um, um, energy conversion or steam turbines um, curriculum, you would be able to create one by clicking the curriculum link. Okay. Click on curriculum and we'll call this energy generation In your category you want to select uh, SIPCO okay. and courses this is where you'll add the courses so um, this is one group I'm going to create two groups just so you can see what um, how those would work and you can change the group name if I click Add Courses, uh, the courses that you have were going to show up, and right now you only have five, so I'll go ahead and select all of these. And you can drag courses into other groups if you like. Okay. If you want to control the way a user is going to complete these groups, you can turn on Pace Progress. And this is going to require the user complete these courses before they can complete these courses. Okay. Any questions so far? No. Okay. So, so I availability. Can, actually, I do Go have ahead. one. So yeah. I can effectively, um, um, without going through you, I can add other courses in the inventory um, as we go forward. Well, you'd, you would have to go through me to have those added. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, because we, we have to turn them on, on in the system and it's at a, at a higher level. Actually, we have to create the courses for, um, for SIPCO and then they're loaded into the system. Okay, gotcha. But if you had third-party courses from another um, e-learning supplier, you can load those into the system as well. Okay. I'd probably show you at another time. We probably don't have enough time to get into that feature today. But if you did have courses that you wanted to load yourself, then I would be able to show you how to do that. Just out of curiosity, is that something you'd have to have a file from, or it would just like be a, a link to those courses through this LMS? Um, if it is a um, an, e an actual e-learning file, which means it's going to be SCORM or AICC, you would have to have a file um, formatted, which was which is SCORM compliant, okay. which means it would be valid e-learning content. So it's going to, there's probably going to be a test associated with it, and it's going to report a score back to the learning management system based upon the exam results. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Um, Going back to the curriculum, this is where availability is. This is just like the online courses. So if you wanted your users to be able to self-enroll, then you would have to set the self-enrollment here. And there's also automatic enrollment, which means that, um, let's say that all the users that are in TIPCO are automatically going to receive an enrollment for this training. So this would, this means it's going to move it from the catalog my courses because they, they they will be enrolled and one thing that's very important if you're building training yourself is on availability there's a thing called department visibility and we want to select um, this add department just click add department and it will automatically set the availability department visibility to SIPCO if you don't do that, then other departments in the system will be able to view your training. And I edit the LMS sometimes and um, I try to do it once or twice a week to make sure 
um, things aren't being added with errors. Mm -hmm. So if I see a random piece of training floating about, I'll, um, and this isn't set, I'll go in and set it. And completion's going to be um, similar to um, the online courses. So you can set a certificate for this training. So if you want a user to receive a receive a certificate whenever they complete this training, all you have to do is uh, check a learner receives a certificate upon completion. Okay. Is that something you would want to do? Yeah, I think uh, uh, having it as an option for people, I know we've got some, some employees that really like that. Okay. So um, one thing that one thing that you have to do if you're going to utilize certificates is you have to choose a certificate file. So um, right here where it says certificate URL, click choose file. And at the very top, there's a certificates folder. And um, so since this is a curriculum, it's not going to have a score. Scores aren't reported for uh, curricula, just for individual courses. Mm -hmm. And if there's an expiration, then we would want to choose a certificate that's going to support an expiration date. So for example, if we have a certificate that we're creating and it's one time, then we would choose no expiry, no score. If we have something that um, is going to expire, then we would choose with expiry, no score. I'm going to select on this your, file. On your catalog courses that you, you have, are those automatic certificates or do you have to select? Uh, you, would have to, you would have to go in and select those. We don't have them turned on automatically. Okay. If it's something that you would want, we can do that. Yeah, sure. So, um, so there, right now there's no expiration set. So if we want, uh, if we want, for example, to say this is going to expire in one year, then we can set that here. And then if we want to allow users to re-enroll in this training or have the system re-enroll the user into training, um, for, again, for example, we could say 11 months after um, they are enrolled, they'll be re-enrolled okay. or 11 months after completion. So once a user completes all this training, they'll receive a certificate and then 11 months after that, they'll be re-enrolled into the training so they can complete it again. But if it's only one time, then um, you wouldn't want to set allow re-enrollment. Yeah. It's all, if it's also one time, you wouldn't want to choose uh, with expiration. Yeah. So you just want um, no expiration and no score. We'll select this file, and I'll show you what it looks like. There's a preview certificate link at the bottom, and this will show you what the certificate will look like. Nice. Um, the learner's name will be here, and course name, and the date acquired. Messages are um, are turned on by default. So since this is a curriculum and there's a certification associated with it, I recommend um, leaving the emails turned on. So they will receive an email whenever they get assigned the certificate, but um, they'll also receive an email whenever they complete the certificate. So any questions? No. I'm going to cancel out of this. So just to cover a couple of other options that are available in courses, we have instructor-led courses. Um, and that's, of course, going to be a course that's going to occur within a classroom environment mm -hmm. where um, you'll be able to enroll users into that um, into that course and then mark them complete once it has, once the training has occurred. And a course bundle is just assigning or creating a grouping of courses. It's, um, 
not something that many people use. Usually whenever people want to group um, training together, they'll use curriculum. With a course bundle, you do not have the um, completion requirements or completion options that you have with the curriculum, such as a certification. So some of the reports that are available, we have a learner activity report and um, so you can select your learner that you want to pull a report on and I'm just going to pull a report here and this is showing um, of course my name and login information how many enrollments I have how many courses I've started and how many courses I've completed how many credits I've earned and how much time I've spent total in the system okay or not in the system but in those courses Mm -hmm. And you'll see there's no other information here. So this will be more fruitful whenever you have users in the system that are actually completing training. Yeah. And learner progress is another uh, report. So Other, other options we have. So you can fill in other options within this report. Uh, we can choose a course name and I'm going to choose energy conversion, update that filter. And this is showing information for this individual course. It's showing that I'm enrolled, but I'm not completed, but it's not showing any other enrollments. One thing I want to point out that is a valuable tool on each one of these pages is the ability to filter out information. Mm -hmm. So um, each column has the ability to be filtered. That's what these little uh, filters are. So if you want to add, uh, for example, if I want to add an enrolled filter, I just click this filter. And if I click one, I'll type in one, click add filter, it's filtering out that one enrollment that um, we have for this individual course. Make sense? Yeah, I think so. Is that going to basically isolate employees that have one enrollment in that case? Um, of course, you've well, got to. You've got to identify it as a specific course, but. Um, yeah, so if we, say if I remove these filters, and so if we want to review courses that a user's enrolled into, so we type one, one means yes, and. Um, okay. We want to look at individual courses. Actually, let me go back here. If I click on the user, I can click View Enrollment, and it'll take me to that user, and I'll show it'll show the enrollments for that user. Okay. And some other report. If you're using a curriculum, curricular activity would be a, a good report. And Right now, we don't have any curricula in the system, so it's not going to let us choose a curriculum. But if you want to look at activity for individual courses, you can uh, select the individual course, update filter. I'm enrolled in this. Yeah, showing one enrollment. Mm -hmm. So once you have users that are in the system and completing training, this is going to make a lot more sense. Okay. Um, and I'd be more than happy to sit with you and or work with you and review some of the reporting features if um, if you have any questions. Once you have users that are in the system and completing training, and these are um, 
for the admin dashboard, this populates graphically, right? Um, how do you mean exactly? Like graphs and tables and I don't know, for some reason I seem to remember like you could get a snapshot of um, how training's going for everybody or maybe I'm thinking of something different. Well, we do have dashboards and these dashboards, um, let me log out and log in as another user might okay. be better. So we yeah. have we have graphs that are available and and again these are going to populate once you have users that are in the system and they're completing training. Yeah. Yep, those are kind of nice for quick looks, snapshots. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And unfortunately we cannot customize these. Um, we cannot customize these. So these are the standard dashboards in the system, and um, and hopefully you find them useful. But we can't we can't change them, unfortunately. Okay. Not at this time, anyway. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. No problem. So any other questions that, or anything else that I can show you? Um, what, what do you think you need to do to get your, uh, to get this out to your training or your trainees? Or do you um, feel like it's ready? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I can see, you know, it looks like what I need to do is go into admin, select everybody, and select the um, reset password, and that'll be their email notification. And then when they log in, the way it's set up now is they will see those courses that you loaded. Um, since they can self-enroll, it'll right, be right there on their, their start page. Mm -hmm. And they can just go to town and just kind of do what they need to do. And as far as a lot of the other things there, it looks like, um, you know, just like with a lot of things when it comes to LMS and stuff like that, it's like get in there and kick the tires and play around and, you know, get get yeah. more exposure to it and just try to run reports and do those kinds of things. And I think, yeah, you know, I've always got you to, that I can call and, and if I run into any hiccups, but in terms of, like you said, as people use it more, it'll probably become more intuitive to me. Yeah, and I'll send you some documentation for training as well. Okay. And, and the, there's also um, this little circle in the bottom right. Mm -hmm. you click that. Um, it's called the Absorb Assistant. So if you click on Absorb LMS, it has like how-to stuff, like how to create a group, how to um, how to impersonate a user, um, how to view a user's transcript. So these are um, kind of hints that will walk you through how to do certain things. Okay, that's cool. So just another resource that you have. Sure. So any other questions? No, I think we're, I'm ready to be dangerous with this thing. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> well, um, I know that there's still other courses that we have to get in the system for you. When do you think that you'll have that uh, list for us? It'll probably be a little while because, um, so the plant superintendent wanted to start them off at those 501s. And then um, I suspect what will happen is probably about June time frame. Um, okay. We'll add the recip stuff. So, because right. um, that's what they're going to be that's going to be new engines for them that they're uh, we're building a new plant. And so they're definitely going to want to uh, know some of that stuff. So my hope is, is that they'll progress through this relatively quickly and we'll be able to add those courses. But the thing is, is they have a lot of different things, a lot of different courses that they have to do. There's the OSHA 
stuff that they have to do every year. And so we don't want to overload them and make sure that they have enough time to get everything done. So it might not be like a real course heavy thing um, for the short, for the small number of people that we have. Uh, you know, it could be a deal where year to year it's, you know, six or eight courses. Okay. okay. Well, sounds good. Well, I'm here and um, yeah, just shoot me an email whenever you want more courses out of Be sure to include Jeannie since she's mm -hmm. your account rep. Sure. Perfect. Right, well, thank you very much for your time and I will get yeah. this uh, training video loaded and I'll send you a link whenever it's complete. All right, great. Thanks, Dusty. It was very helpful. All right, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.